Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We continue our work of adding a database backend to our task list, the fifth version of it. And we finished off where we should, I tested adding in a new task. The, the login still worked. Uh, we made some changes to, to that. Uh, but we got this message failed to add. So just to check, I went into the database and I do a select to see if I have any items and that string definitely got added to the database. Okay, so adding to the database was not the problem. The problem, it would seem, is somewhere in what we return uh, from this. So this gives back a future of int, uh, which that worked and did the addition. We've seen the result of that. And so this should have a task, add task, map count, count greater than one. Uh, which I would have, oh, greater than zero. Um, we only added one item. It would really be unusual if we got a number greater than one. Okay, that makes sense. So that is inevitably why the, the add didn't work. Um, let's go ahead and jump out of the database and restart our server. So what do we have left? Uh, there are two main things that we have. One is the delete, which is obvious. Uh, the other is the fact that we made our, we made it so that our validate stores a user ID and we're using that user ID in add task. Um, and in fact, I have this funny feeling that delete is going to work better if we have a user ID instead of a username because our tasks are stored with the foreign key of, of the user ID. Um, so how are we going to deal with this? We need to make it so that create user also gets back. It does the same thing that validate does. Let's work on delete first and then we will return to create user. Okay, so we uncomment everything that had been there. It's not happy right now because we don't have a future. The remove task is going to return a future of Boolean to tell us whether or not the task was uh, actually removed. Dot map removed rocket removed. Hey, there we go. Okay, so so the controller change was actually quite simple. We just take the database result and map it to produce what we want over here. What about on this side? How do we delete things using slick? So we've seen that we can we can do maps and we can do flat maps on things. Uh, we also get to use for loops if which allow us to do joins. Remember that in Scala, for loops just get translated. This winds up being a map. This is a filter. Actually, this outer, the, the innermost one will be a map and all the ones outside of it will actually be flat maps. Uh, the ifs get translated to filters. And so this is nothing but maps, flat maps, and filters. We can add by doing a plus equals. In order to delete something, what we want to do, db.run, is, and I am going to change this so that it actually takes the user ID because as we said, our tasks are uh, set up that way. Oh, and I just realized something that, hmm, to make this work nicely with a database, we might actually be redoing some of the, the JavaScript now that I think about it. So we're moving task takes the user ID and it really doesn't want an index here. Uh, what we want to send over is is not just the index of the task that they are deleting and we could probably do that but it would be much better and in fact then we wouldn't even need the user id now that i think about it uh we would what we really want here is the task id okay so let's assume that we have a task id and write this code yeah. so this would be items dot and let's find all of the ones that have that task ID. So underscore dot, or I call it task ID. It's an item ID in here. The. 
So we want to find all of the values that have an item ID equal to the one that we are looking for. And once we have them, we can simply call delete. Now this does not return a future of Boolean. Um, we could, this is, this is a design decision here. It turns out this returns an int because it tells us how many are deleted. If I want this to be a Boolean, I can simply map this result, take that count and return whether that count is greater than zero. And that will tell us whether we've deleted anything. This is really the right way to do remove task. Uh, so that makes me happy. The problem is that our JavaScript is set up to give us back a username and, and an ID. And in fact, this call here, uh, this should be some item ID here. And what we should be reading is an item ID here. Now, unfortunately, this code now compiles because both of those were integers. Uh, but an index and an item ID are not going to be the same when we run this. Um, and that actually alters how we're going to do our task list up here because what we need to pass over is not just the strings. Right now our tasks are being sent across as just plain strings. We actually need to send across a combination of the string and its ID so that when we delete them, we can send back that, that ID. Otherwise, the client has no idea what the ID is for a particular task. Okay. Um, I kind of don't want to get into that in this video. We have one other thing that needed to be fixed up, and that is the fact that create user needs to be doing this same thing that we have already added to our uh, validate, it needs to be getting back a user ID. So instead of having just a Boolean for user created, we really want this to return a user ID, which was actually this is the uh, now I think about this, an option of user ID, option of user ID and similar to what we did above an option of user ID matched on one case is sum of a user ID and the other case is a none. Oh, that was fun autocomplete. In which case we give back that. And our problem here is once I have that all correct, it says um, this variable is just a Boolean. Well, that's because what that is what our model says that create is returning. And we really want create to return an option of integer. That will make the task list happy. So now our create user does the right thing, but our database doesn't. So we just added a user on here and it gave us back the count uh, for this. And we want to, we need to return an option of int. So for example, false becomes a none. That's the easy change. This Boolean actually needs to be the user ID of the user that we just added. Well, we said negative one here because that was going to be auto done for us. Uh, so what we really need to do here is actually run another database action that finds our user. Okay, the one that we have just created with this username and paste. And because we were mapping on a future here and we're doing something that returns another future, I want a flat map. So we have this add count and there actually an is an if here. Um, I don't have to convert this to 
curly braces, but I'm going to because when I make something multiple lines, it just feels better to me. So if add count is greater than zero, then I want to go looking for them. Obviously, if add count was zero, then we then I need to return a future dot successful of none. We go looking for them, we get the result, and we would return and actually, we can do the map here either inside or outside. Turns out if you do it inside, then the map is actually happening on the database and it's giving us back uh, that Actually, since I have to map on the outside anyway, I will go ahead, map of underscore dot, once again, I'm gonna go with the head option, dot map of underscore dot ID. I don't know if that really saved me anything. Um, that jumped down some, I wanted to hit enter here, just to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so if the thing got added, then we want to do a database query to find that user and take the result, which is a sequence, optionally get the head of it and map it to their ID. Okay, and that gives us back an option ID. So this way when we uh, use a create user, whether we do a create user or a validate user, we will get an ID for them. Okay, everything's happy other than remove case, uh, remove task, which is going to be getting an index because that's what our JavaScript does and we need it to actually give us back an ID. So that's the thing we have to tackle next and it will force us to actually make a new version of our JavaScript file so that it plays along nicely with everything else.